I've analyzed the Buffalo Bills 2023-2024 to NFL schedule, and I'm breaking it all down here on today's episode of TWB. You are now listening to the Watering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Welcome in everybody and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show here on the Buffalo Fan Base Network. You can find this podcast on most audio platforms, YouTube of course, and of course on social media. Uh, I am one half of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. I am your host Andrew Chang. You can find me on social media by searching up 2 Changs. And we got an NFL schedule to talk about. It dropped today on May 11th and that's when I'm recording it. And I just have a ton of talking points to talk to you about. So I'm just going to get right into it. This is this is a, a highly anticipated season, right? The Bills have been pretty much a successful team for a really long time in terms of NFL teams like you see teams that are good and then they just like flare out the Bills have been consistently good under the leadership of Sean McDermott minus that you know one year where we didn't do so hot but we don't talk about that year (laughs) and um, Brandon Bean but this upcoming season it's like I need to see a step forward from this team I want them to take that leap and this NFL schedule is pretty much like the roadmap of how the Bills can do that, at least for me, from my perspective. So I'm just going to get into some, into some talking points here, and I'm going to talk about the time categories of this game. So what do I mean by that? I'm talking about primetime games. I'm talking about the 4.30 games and 1 p.m. games and you know games that we don't really know about. So right now, the Bills are scheduled to have seven primetime games. Six of those are slotted at the 8 p.m. time slot, which I'm very happy about. One of them is at 9.30 a.m. on NFL Network. I'm not too thrilled about that because I I like to, you know, not (laughs) wake up super, super early to, you know, get ready for a Bills game let alone it be on a network that I don't have. So I will have to watch that in a very legal way. And I hope you are too. You can't see, but I'm like winking and giving air quotes. You you know what you got to do. <laughs> Let's talk about those primetime games. So right off the bat, week one, not a surprise, but because the Bills already announced this and the NFL announced this a couple days ago. Or I guess by the time you're listening to this, if it's on Monday, they would have announced out on Wednesday, last Wednesday. But the Bills are at new at the New York Jets for Monday night football. Aaron Rodgers, MetLife Stadium. That team has got a competent quarterback. It's gonna be a tough one. The second primetime game, and I'm gonna use air quotes here and a big asterisk, is the fact that the Jags are at the Buffalo Bills, but we're actually going to be in London. So it's labeled a home game, but we're really away. And another thing to really think about is the fact that the Jags are going to be there a week before to play the Falcons. So they'll be more acclimated to it. And they're more accustomed to going to the London games because they've been doing it since, oh God, (laughs) I don't even want to know. It basically feels like forever. The next primetime game is actually the week after that, week six. The New York Giants, Brian Dable, coming back to Orchard Park for Sunday Night Football. That's that's a big game, and I, I fully anticipate that they are going to do everything in their power to rattle Josh Allen. And I, you know what? Before I like get too far into this, I'm going to try to not like overanalyze each one of these games. But that's what I really want to do. And I know if you're a fan like me, you're excited and you're thinking about, ooh, do the Bills have a chance here? What what about this team? What about that team? And if we do that, we'll be here all day. So I'm going to try to like expedite this pod and just make it nice and concise for you. So the next big 
game after that, the primetime game, is Week 8, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Buffalo Bills. And I believe that's a Thursday night football game. Pretty excited about that. After that, we are going to... We are going back to Cincinnati to play the Bengals um, on Sunday night football. We all know what happened the last time the Bills played the Bengals. So I'm sure they'll be a little bit more motivated to, I guess, avenge their season or their most recent season and how they exited the playoffs because that was not great. And us Bills fans really weren't expecting that. After that, the Denver Broncos are at the Buffalo Bills for Monday Night Football in Week 10. Los Angeles Chargers, we have a Saturday night night game against them at Week 17. And then Week 18, I guess you can call this primetime, but it's more like a I'm not entirely sure. It's against the Miami Dolphins, and it's a to-be-determined. Now, usually with that game... Seeing it's a divisional game, end of the season, if the division isn't locked up, I could see that being like the primetime game. Like the the really, really good primetime game. Another talking point outside of the primetime games is that we finally have a late bye week. Right? It feels like it's been forever since the Bills have had a late bye week. This year this coming year it's going to be week 13 the last time the bills had a late bye week was week 11 of the 2020 season which really isn't that far ago or far long ago sorry excuse me but for me it just feels like it's been forever and i did a little digging and i went all the way back to when Sean McDermott took over as the head coach for the Buffalo Bills in 2017 season. And we had a bye week in week six. We won that following week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In 2018, we had a bye in week 11. We also had a win in week 12 against the Jags. In 2019, we had a bye week in week six. And then we also beat the Dolphins in week seven. In 2020, 2020, excuse me, we had a bye week in week 11, and we won against the Chargers in week 12. 2021, we had a bye week in week 7, and then we won in against the Dolphins in week 8. 2022, we had a bye week in week 7, again, kind of early. We won against the Green Bay Packers, as we all know. And this year, we, as I just mentioned, we have a later bye week being the 13th week. But we play the Kansas City Chiefs. That's uh, that's kind of a tall order. And what I'm looking back at some of these games that we played, these were games that the Bills are pretty much expected to win, right? In 2017, the, the Bucks were terrible. And they had Jameis Winston at the helm. Uh, 2018, the Jags, I mean, come on. The the Jags weren't relevant at that time, and they just start getting back up to that. Then the Dolphins and Chargers, and in the past three or four years, last year it was Green Bay. These These were games that the Bills were expected to win, but this year... This this feels more like a coin flip kind of game for me. And I'm not saying that I don't have faith in the team. Because I 100% do. But this is a team that's going to have to, that's going to push the Bills to their absolute limit. And we got to do everything in our power. And I say we like I'm doing anything. The Bills are going to have to do everything in their power in order to make this streak of winning games uh, after the bye week a thing. Okay, let's move on with other topics here. But before we get into that, we're going to take a quick break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Dick DeGroat, Bill's dad. Now back to the show. Welcome back in, everybody. And thanks for joining me on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. As I mentioned before, you can find this show on the Buffalo Fanbase Network. We also have a website. So please go check that out. We got some amazing merch, like blogs, 
all the good stuff. But let's get back into today's episode, and we're talking about the NFL schedule. I'm going to talk about now about the games that we have a rest advantage, disadvantage, and games that aren't really applicable. And I'm going to define what I consider rest for this experiment. And I'm only thinking about the Bills, right? I'm only thinking about if the Bills have had a week's worth of rest, 168 hours. Anything more than 168 hours from their previous game, I would consider an advantage. Anything less would obviously then be a disadvantage. And I'll, I guess I'll go with the non-applicable game right off the bat, which is week one against the Jets, because in order for us to determine if the next game would be a, uh, I'm sorry, if the game would be a rest advantage or disadvantage, you need a previous game to go off of. So week one, you, you, you have nothing to go off of. You're at neutral. And then the other game being the Dolphins game, just because we we just don't know what's going to happen. So let's talk about the other non-applicable games here where the Bills are just even. They have the week 168 hours down to a T. Week 3 against Washington. Week 4 against the Dolphins. Week 12 against the Eagles. Week 15 against the Cowboys. And as I mentioned, the TB, TBD game against the Dolphins in Week 18. We just don't know anything about that. Now let's talk about the games with less rest. And this is a, you know, when I was doing this, it, this was such an interesting exercise. But we'll, we'll we'll get into it. Games with less rest. Week two against the Raiders. Week five against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I say that it's. It's a game with less rest, less than a week's worth of rest because the Bills have to play at 930 in the morning, our time, and they have to travel like that's that's kind of tough. And as I mentioned earlier in this podcast, the Jags are going to be there a week earlier. They're already like familiar with where they're playing. They know the turf. They've been with this for a while. They, they just understand. They just get it. The Bills haven't been there since they played the Jags, and I'm pretty sure EJ Manuel is our quarterback. So that, to, let's let's bring that way back. Way, way, way back. Okay? Games with less rest. Continuing, we got Week 7 against the Patriots, Week 8 against the Bucks, Week 11 against the Jets, and then Week 16 against the Chargers. Now let's talk about the games where we have extra rest. Week 6 against the Giants. Week 9 against the Bengals. Week 10 against the Broncos. Week 14 against the Chiefs. And week 17 against the Patriots. So, that was pretty much the NFL schedule. And breaking it down in who has more... who How we have more rest. How it doesn't really matter. We break even. And then how we... Um, excuse me, and how we don't have as much rest. But it all comes down to this. What do we like and what don't we like? I'm going to tell you what I don't like about this NFL schedule right now, and it's a hard one. And that's such a a weak thing to say, personally. The Bills have the seventh hardest schedule, like rank of opponent, with a win average of .542. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of that, but that's that's what you're going to get. If you want to be the best, you have to play the best. I also don't really like how the Bills have an inconsistent schedule, but that's one of the perks of being a premier NFL team. I also don't like how the Bills have, at least right now, more games with a rest disadvantage than an advantage. We don't know how that Dolphins game is going to turn out. So we, who knows? Who actually knows? I don't like the games before and after the bye, which is kind of weird to say, but I'll explain it right here. From week 8 to week 13, which 
week 13 we'll have the bye you have two games where we're going to have a rest disadvantage now you'll also have two games where you have a rest advantage and one game that doesn't really matter in week 12 which is against the eagles right before the bye and then coming out of the bye you have a gauntlet of teams to go through okay and two of them i'm sorry two of them are divisional opponents four of them are conference opponents and only one of them is an nfc opponent so you really can't like drop the ball and if you are going to drop the ball to any of these teams it's going to have to be the cowboys you're playing the chiefs again the cowboys chargers dolphins and then the patriots that that's a tall task another thing i don't really like about this schedule and I, I, it's not really the schedule. I guess it's just who we're playing. Is the fact that the Bills' divisional opponents are going to be way more competitive than they have ever been before. And I like not having to worry about divisional games, but they, they've earned my respect, at least. And even last season, and even the season before that, I could see them getting better through the draft. I was like, oh, God, they're actually like doing things that make sense. Except for Bill Belichick, who's like threw a ton of money at like these weird tight ends and like gave ridiculous contracts out. And you, you can see them kind of taking a step kind of back, but now they're moving forward and they're going to have a ton of cap space, uh, cap space moving forward in the future. But regardless, the competition level within our division has gone significantly higher. And like, I, I hate saying this. But is it too conservative to say that you'll think that we'll split divisional games? Is that like a fair thing to do? I don't know. I don't think that's like wrong. We split with every other division, ex divisional opponent except for the Patriots. And they only got better. <laughs> All the divisional opponents got better. So I, I think that's probably a safe bet. Jets got Aaron Rodgers, Dolphins got Vic Fangio, Jalen Ramsey, and then the Patriots have got an actual offensive coordinator and not Matt Patricia doing it. So I, I, I think that they should be a little better. Things I like about this NFL schedule, that we have five 1 p.m. times. <laughs> I call me like real old fashioned, but I really generally, personally, love the 1 p.m. time slot and I I get it maybe I'm getting old and it seems a little lame like oh man you don't you don't like that well I I do like the 1 p.m. times but and this might sound hypocritical but I also really like primetime games too as so long as they're not on Thanksgiving and I am very okay planting my flag in there I hate the thanksgiving games i love thanksgiving it's one of my favorite holidays of all time and i don't like stressing out about my favorite football team on the day that i'm supposed to be thankful for everything you know how stressed out i was last season when i was trying to cook this turkey against the when the bills were playing the dolphins or i'm sorry excuse me the lions I'm sitting there basting this turkey, getting angry, just go like, come on, Josh, come on, do something, do something. And then, you know, obviously we won and I was very excited, but that was a very stressful time to cook a turkey and watch a football game. So <laughs> uh, I am not a fan of Thanksgiving games. No, thank you. And you can take that back. I, I think the only other time that the Bills play kind of near a holiday, if I'm not mistaken, is new year's eve but that's a sunday time where all nfl teams are playing unless they have primetime games that aren't on that sunday but uh yeah i'm good i'm good on that I'm, i i like the fact that we got a good mix of 4 30 1 p.m and primetime games but in another sense it's that's like a double-edged sword as i mentioned before it's very inconsistent it's like Peaks and valleys, picks and valleys. Well, that pretty much does it for the NFL schedule, but I'm going to give you some of my closing thoughts here. And I know it's kind of a shorter one, but 
I just wanted to talk about this podcast really bad. Uh, next time we talk, we'll get, kind of take a deeper meta-analysis dive into the Bills' second-round pick, Osiris Torrance, unless something else comes up. But here are my closing thoughts, and this is great. The schedule's out, <laughs> right? We're one step closer to the NFL season, and I find myself asking myself if the Bills can get the AFC East for a four straight season. And as awesome as that would be, that's not enough for me. <laughs> like, and that sounds so like selfish, I guess, or ungrateful. I I want this team to get the job done. And I know that they can get it done. I think last season was an anomaly when it comes to all the things that have happened from on the field, off the field, but all that stuff's in the past and it's a new season. It's a fresh start. We got a full tank of gas. I hope that the Bills can keep that going and not run out of gas like we did against the Bengals. And I know they, they can. We, we've all seen it. We've all seen this team do great things and I'm just waiting for it, man. And I know that they can do it. And I'm, and that just gets me so excited. It really does. But we don't know how it's going to go. So we just got to just sit back, relax, and take it one week at a time. Jump through a table. Eat some chicken wings. You know, just what Bill's Mafia does. So on that note, thanks for sticking around on another episode of the Wanda and Buffalo podcast. Again, you can find this podcast on most social media, on podcasting platforms, and of course on YouTube by searching up the Wander Buffalo Podcast. You can find me on social media by searching up Two Changs. Don't forget that we do have other amazing shows on the Buffalo Fan Base Network, so check them out. Check out the website, and most importantly, go Bills. Go Bills.